You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Uh, I'm going to play this video, y'all. This was four years ago. This was four years ago. And I want you to listen to what I said four years ago, shortly after these idiots put Donald Trump in the White House. Get right to uh, the issue at hand. Y'all have already been talking about it. We've been discussing it right here on TV One. After yesterday's despicable news conference by President Donald Trump, I was in my car uh, trying to decide what is it that I wanted to listen to uh, to put into proper context my feelings about what we heard. And I thought back uh, to the first black woman elected from the South since Reconstruction, uh, Congresswoman Barbara Jordan of Houston. Here's what she had to say in 1973 at the Watergate hearings. Earlier today, we heard the beginning of the preamble to the Constitution of the United States. We the people. It's a very eloquent beginning. But when that document was completed on the 17th of September in 1787, I was not included in that we the people. I felt somehow for many years that George Washington and Alexander Hamilton just left me out by mistake. But through the process of amendment, interpretation, and court decision, I have finally been included in We the People. Today, I am an inquisitor. And hyperbole would not be fictional and would not overstate the solemnness that I feel right now. My faith in the Constitution is whole, it is complete. And I am not going to sit here and be an idle spectator to the diminution, the subversion, the destruction of the Constitution. Sybil, just like Congresswoman Barbara Jordan, I will not be an idle spectator to avoid white supremacists sitting in the White House. I will not be an idle spectator to see Donald Trump walk in the footsteps of Republican Herbert Hoover, who led the Lily White movement when he was president from 1929 to 1933. I will not sit idly by to see Donald Trump act like Democrat uh, uh, Woodrow Wilson, one of the most violent racists we've ever had served in the office of the president. The fact of the matter is yesterday's news conference was shameful. It was despicable. It was it was him giving the middle finger to black people, to Jews, to Hispanics, to Asians, to women, to white people of conscience. This is a president who has no shame. He is an immoral leader. Now, I know some people out there will say, well, he was elected. But yes, but guess what? Wilson was elected. So was Hoover was elected and other races who have served in that particular White House. What this man has done by lining himself with neo-Nazis and with white supremacists is shameful and should not go unchecked. But it's not just a question of going unchecked. It go, we must do more than simply tweet and comment on Facebook. This is a challenge. This is a declaration of war. Tom, for 398 years, black folks have been fighting this country to ensure that it lives up to its ideals. For 398 years, we made it perfectly clear we're not going to sit idly by and allow ourselves to be embarrassed and run over and shamed by white supremacists. This is the 190th anniversary of the first black newspaper, Freedom's Journal, which was founded in March 1827. In their lead in Editorial, they wrote, we wish to plead our own cause. Too long have others spoken for us. This is a moment where we don't need anybody else to speak for us. We can speak with clarity and with precision as to exactly what is required of us. And what this requires, it requires alphas and kappas and omegas and sigmas, iotas, aka's, deltas, zetas, sigma gamma rho, the links. It requires the, the Prince Hall Masons. It requires me by me. It requires people of conscience to stand up, whether you are bougie, whether you are grassroots, whether you are, in, what, 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 no matter where you are, it requires black people and other people of conscience to say we are going to oppose any effort 
to go back to the days of Jim Crow, to go back to the days after Reconstruction when you had the Redeemer movement by Democrats, when the Lily White movement by white folks as well in this country on the Republican side. We have seen this before, and every time it has happened, we fought back. And what that means is it's time for folks to stand up and mobilize and organize. It means that when it comes to the ballot box, I don't care who you are. I don't want to hear anybody say my vote does not matter because when you see a white supremacist at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, all you need, that's the only proof you need to show your vote does indeed matter. What that means is we need people in Virginia, in Tennessee, in Mississippi, in Alabama, in Texas, in Georgia, in Florida, in Illinois, in California, in Wisconsin, in Michigan, in Pennsylvania to say enough is enough. What it means for us to go to city council meetings, county commissioner meetings, uh, state meetings, go to the governor's mansion and say we are going to rain a holy hail down on any politician who stands with Donald Trump. Mm. If you think we are playing, you are wrong. The previous generation, the baby boomers, they stood up. Our grandmothers and grandfathers stood up. Our mothers and fathers stood up. It is time for Gen X and Gen Y and millennial generation to stand up and say we are going to take this fight on and go after anybody who stands in our path. I will not stand idly by and listen to Donald Trump anymore. I will not listen to a man who is an immoral leader. I will not listen to anybody, whether they are black Republican, who agrees with him, who voted for him, who continues to apologize for him. And you will be name checked, you will be embarrassed, and you will not be invited to anything that involves black people. Mm. It is time for us to call people out. It is time for us to realize that we cannot wait. In 2018, we're going to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Dr. King being assassinated. We're going to focus on the 50th anniversary of the Kerner Commission's report on the race riots in 1967. Do understand this is a moment where people are going to have to decide whose side they are on. Are you on the side of righteousness? Or are you on the side of bigotry? Mm. Are you on the side of just people? Or are you on the side of white supremacists. There is not going to be any any effort to say I can stand on either one and I don't care who you are if you are Republican or Democrat you have been served notice mm -hmm. if you stand with this man if you support white nationalist policies we are going to take you out at the ballot box and put people of conscience in Heather Hayer is going to be buried today she is a 21st century version of Viola Uzo a white woman from Michigan who died trying to help black folks to vote this is not a black thing or Hispanic thing or Asian thing, it's a conscious thing. Mm -hmm. This is a battle for the soul of America, and like the Tuskegee Airmen said, we will fight to the last hour, to the last minute, to the last second. We will fight, fight, fight. Number 45, game on. Greg Carr, you were sitting on that set. Yeah, sitting next to Liz Copeland. That's right. That has, right, to, that has to be our attitude for the next 81 days. Well, for, for our whole lives, Roland, I think what, what we just watched, and by the way, whether it be Lawrence O'Donnell and eventually Chris Hayes and others who have followed in the wake, you've been saying that from day one. Now they become more emboldened, Don Lemon and others. Well, they won't, the they, 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 they won't invite me on their shows, but go ahead. Oh, no, 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 they won't, but they watch yours because it took them two years, two and a half, three years, but they finally start talking like that a little bit. They still ain't, you know, got a whole lot of bass in their voice, but the, the important thing... <laughs> I think, that, that we just saw there. You know, it's funny when you say immoral leader. See, you, you believe in something that's bigger than the United States. That was a sermon. And I think that is the one thing that you and I and Reese and Erica and, and, you know, our people have in common with Larry Kudlow. You know, we have faith. But our faith, and, you know, I love Barbara Jordan. I mean, brilliant orator. You know, when, when Barbara Jordan said her faith in the Constitution is perfect, I appreciate that. I honor that. But there's some, at some point, we're going to have to have a real conversation with that because my reading is she's making a fundamental mistake because that immorality you were talking about isn't derived from reading the U.S. Constitution. I suspect it's informed much more by the Christian Bible. And Larry Kudlow has a faith as well. His faith is in white nationalism and money. And that's bigger than the United States. See, the United States, you got to think of the United States. That's why he says it's not our game. The United States is a game. It's a state. That means it doesn't have an, an anchor in a thing beyond itself. 
So when we when we talk, we go to biblical scripture and it says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, the substance of things hoped for, that's that aspirational America that Barack Obama was talking about that we thought once we got one person in, it's going to do something, which is why I did what you suggested. I went to vote.org. I checked. I voted a couple of months ago. I still went. I even kicked a little money into them. I'm going to vote for Biden-Harris, and when they get inaugurated, I'm going to work like hell to bend them to the will of the people because I don't care who's in office because we got to understand our faith can't be in politics as the end because when we understand cut those faith is in money and white nationalism so is trump right. so is this this little creature right here stephen miller this book just came out hate monger this is the book on stephen miller 34 years old sitting up there i have nothing in common with this man but what they count on which is why people being civil what they count on is the idea that somehow the american negro sometime between when the boats pulled up and now converted our faith in something much bigger than the United States to a faith in the United States. And see, that then is like in basketball when you pick up your dribble and freeze the, the person who's playing defense. They think they can freeze us by continuing to say, well, you have to subpoena us and then you have to come and appeal to the court. Meanwhile, they understand they don't give a damn about none of that. Their faith is in something else. Now, what they don't understand finally about us is that our faith was always in something else, too. So even though Barbara Jordan can say her faith in the Constitution is perfect, trust me, her mom and them, her family and them, their faith was in something bigger than that. And woe be the day, white nationalists, when you yeah. wreck your little experiment because you're going to find out that we never believed in the United States as the end-all and be-all. And once we mm -hmm. become clear that you don't believe in it, we might actually make some progress because we just tear this whole damn thing down. And, and, and that really is, is what we're talking about because we, we are dealing with a man who will flout the law, who does not care. For all of Barack Obama's cautiousness, his patience, his sense of decency and respect, this man has said, I don't give a damn about any of that. And the white folks who are supporting him and those few Latinos and those few black people and the rest of them, what they are saying is we got no problem with the thug in chief. See, that's why that's why after the next 82 days. I don't want to hear a damn thing for none of them. None mm -hmm. of them. See, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to hear Newt Gingrich uh, talking trash about Senator Kamala Harris. I don't want to hear Newt Gingrich, uh, who actually, uh, let me just pull up, because I, I just want y'all to understand what, what, what we're dealing with here, uh, because w when you're dealing with these thugs who have no sense of decency, when you're dealing with that idiot, Jerry Falwell Jr., who they had to replace because he was uh, j just so pathetic, so-called Christian University. This is what Newt Gingrich tweeted on yesterday. Kamala Harris is such an aggressive personality that she will quickly join Pelosi and Schumer in dominating Biden. As Biden grows weaker and weaker, the election will focus on Harris's radical left positions and her ruthless use of government power to impose radical values. Nobody. Well, actually, I'm going to take one line from Greg. See, Gingrich can speak about being ruthless and using government power because that's what that thug did. That's what yeah, he on, did bro. when he took out <laughs> Jim Wright. That's what that yeah. thug did. And see, you want to talk about Senator Kamala Harris, aggressive personality? How aggressive can you be when your wife is sick and you cheating on her mm -hmm. and you ask her for a divorce mm -hmm. from the hospital Come bed? On. Oh, Come yeah, on, I went there. Cause see, I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna hear a lecture from any of these fraudulent individuals. Damn yeah. you, Franklin Graham. Damn you, Ralph Reed. Damn you, yeah. Robert Jeffers. Damn you, all of you fake Paula White. You too. Damn all of you fake Christians who say Come nothing on, about this immoral man. You say Come nothing on. about his birther wife who has yet to apologize to mm. Michelle Obama and Barack Obama for her birtherism. And now all of a sudden, now, y'all want to bring up birtherism again. You had some fool who got beaten by Kamala Harris who writes a piece in Newsweek trying to somehow suggest, is she actually an American? Is she legitimate? Can she be on the ticket? And then the folks at Newsweek want to sit here and say, oh, y'all got this whole thing wrong. Why we ran it? Hell no, you ran. That's why we not going to read you. 
What I'm mm. trying to get all y'all to understand, I said this means war. And let me tell y'all something. I remember getting a phone call from the CEO of TV One. Oh, just I mean, what are you doing? And then the president of the network, what are you doing? I said, damn it, I'm laying down a marker. Right. Because yeah. I needed them to understand that you can't be black media. Mm. You can't be black owned media and be scared. Wrong. You can't. In where do we go from here, chaos or community? Dr. King mm. said there are four <laughs> institutions that are prime position to lead black folks to liberation. He said the black church, the black yep. press, Negro fraternities and sororities, and black professional organizations. He specifically said the black press must maintain its militancy and not fall to the conservative. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that really is the fundamental problem. That's right. really where we are right now. See, that's why I'm not playing games when it comes to these folk, when it comes to spending dollars with black-owned media. I'm not accepting mm -hmm. pennies on the dollar. No, I want the mm -hmm. whole damn dollar. Come on. Mm -hmm. And so at some point, <laughs> this is the moment when black folks have got this generation, Reese, this generation has got to have the damn courage that they mamas and daddies and grandmothers and grandfathers had. Otherwise, these folk will run over us if we don't. Listen, Roland, I have stomped a hole in anybody that has come for Kamala Harris, Democrat or Republican. I went to war with Chris Dodd, Ed Rendell, David Axelrod. I am never scared. And if I could go to war with Democrats and rip their ass apart, you can better believe when it comes to these Republicans, I'm about to tap that ass for the next 80 days and however long it takes <laughs> to get these motherfuckers okay. out of office. And so we have okay. to stop with the civility. We have to stop right. with the mints and words. We have to stop with kowtowing and the buck dancing mm -hmm. and being afraid to call it what it is. That same yeah. energy that people have and going against the black folks, the people like the CBC members or Senator Kamala Harris, who's making history now, can't take that energy towards Mitch McConnell. Take that energy Come towards on, Donald Trump. Take that energy towards the purse master general. We have the yeah. ability to get outraged. We have the ability to go to war. Mm. But unfortunately, we spend so mm. much time going to war with the people that we need to be joining arms with, at least for the next 83 days. Whatever problem you have or whoever the hell you have a problem with in the Democratic Party, you got to set that aside because these Republicans are ruthless and we have to be even more ruthless. We have to ruffle even more feathers. We have to shake the table like we haven't shaken it before. And we got to okay. take the, the, the energy towards those who will keep their foots on our necks. And if we do not That's win right. in November, we are we are done. We are done. Right. And I know Dr. Carr says that this, you know, he's 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 fine to see this American experiment kind of go a certain way. I don't have that kind of faith, Dr. Carr, about what's on the <laughs> other side of that. So for me, I'm trying to see us get back to where we need to get to and make sure that we take out the people that need to be taken out. And that's Donald Trump and all his cronies. And Erica, here's the deal. That's right. I got white yes. folks who watch the show who actually sent money in. I need them to have the same courage. There's a reason mm -hmm. in that commentary I mentioned Viola Lyuzo. There's a reason mm -hmm. I can mention James Reed. There's a reason, because there were white folks who died during the black freedom movement. And white, and we, we've seen white folks of courage out in these streets dealing with Black Lives Matter. But this is the moment where, like I keep saying, you can't, this can't be close. Mm -mm. This, oh, ele no. this election Not cannot be close. Donald Trump and the Republican Party, they already plan to sue. Already. No, no. You got mm. to beat his ass by 500,000 votes in Florida and in Texas mm -hmm. and in Georgia. Yeah. You got to beat him by 500,000. Like my man said, and remember the Titans, Herman, leave no doubt. That's mm. right. That's right. And, you know, honestly, what you and Reese said, I mean, it's time to pass the collection plate. Listen, this is war, right? Roland has said it. Reese has laid it out. And I'm sure Dr. Carr is going to really kind of put uh, the icing on the cake. But this is war. 
And for the amount of time, and I have to continue to go back to this because honestly, it's a case against the simples and about it. Um, if you are a simple person, then a simple person would be more relegated to kind of having these arguments and comments and social media talking about things that don't have any type of bearing over your liberties and over the semblance of freedom that we do have remaining. This is a time to focus. And so, again, what Reese talked about is all of that energy that people put towards um, biting and talking about um, the 55, I believe it is, members of the Congressional Black Caucus. People talk about folks that are doing the unsexy behind the scenes work as legislators to ensure that there is a voice at the table that is representative of black folks, their constituencies, working class, poor, rural, all of that to actually put that energy into, as we've been talking about for quite some time here on Roll of Martin Unfiltered, get your voting plan together. Because see, what you're not going to hear in the birther conversation is Raphael Edward Cruz, a.k.a. Ted Cruz, who was mm, born God. in Canada, okay, whose father um, actually uh, claimed political asylum here in the United States from Cuba, you're not going to hear about the late John McCain that was born in Panama, but you will <laughs> hear it around black facing um, folks. So honestly, people need to step away from the conversation, calling into question who Kamala Harris is. She's a black woman, damn it. She has led on the executive level. Anything you need to know about comprehensively, comprehensively around Senator Kamala Harris, go see Reese, go to her Twitter page. She has a few threads that comprehensively lay out these really simple conversations where people are trying to wax poetic about what they don't know about. Listen, if you want to have some semblance of what remains of this democracy come November 4th, get your voting plan together, shut the hell up with the silly simple talk that gets you nowhere, that does not get us closer to actually having a national strategy, to actually paving the way into making some real inroads around these uh, different crises that we have going on, as we saw in the Biden-Harris press conference this afternoon, and get ready to vote, period. Greg, this and, and, and Greg, and I really need people listening to understand. Right. First of all, first of all, right. we got right now. We got you know it's uh, we about, about to hit seven thousand uh, on uh, on YouTube. We almost got two thousand on Facebook. But here's the deal, and and I, I did an interview earlier today. The big problem we also facing with right now, and I, and, 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 and just y'all for the, those of y'all who got kids watching, I'm giving you a warning in advance. <laughs> The fundamental problem is we're being fed too much bullshit from black media. Oh, God. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. We're being fed Thanks. games. We've been playing. We've been fed music and gossip. Y'all need to understand. Look, we ain't playing here. Greg, <laughs> Greg, th this, this thing for me, when I say it's war, I'm 51. I'll be 52 in November. This, I'm not approaching this election about me. This is about my nieces and nephews. This is about their unborn children. That's what this is about. Mm -hmm. And let me be also be clear, Greg, and I want you to speak to this here. I need everybody to understand, when I say hashtag fire Trump in November, Roland is not saying I'm going to give the Democratic Party right. and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris uh, mm -hmm. your easy, no, 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 no. They, 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 I'm not giving them runway. No, 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 no. Yeah. I need y'all to understand. I plan on holding them accountable to mm -hmm. issues. And y'all can go check my record. Go pull the four, go, go pull the Essence <laughs> article that I ran in January 2009. Go pull what mm -hmm. I said. Go pull what I wrote in my book, the first President Barack Obama's road to the White House, as originally reported by Roland S. Martin. Go pull the four years of Washington Watch and the four years mm -hmm. of News One Now when I was sitting here holding them accountable. There's a reason mm -hmm. I did not get an exit interview. Mm -hmm. So I need y'all to right. understand this ain't about, oh, you being a Democrat. No, what this is about is the fact that if that man, Trump, and Pence, two of the most evil folks you've ever seen, they yeah. will control appointing half of all federal judges in America.
Mm-hmm. They've mm-hmm. already appointed 203. They're only 800 mm-hmm. or so. They get four more years. They're going to hit 500. Easy. Mm-hmm. This, is right. about, yep. this is about them rolling back environmental protection, rolling back yep. civil rights. The man has already said mm-hmm. this, white folks in suburbia, oh, I ain't letting no low-income folk come out here. Yeah. He ain't got no housing plan. His opportunity zones, they can't even provide us information. I sent an email mm-hmm. two months ago saying, where's the information on how it's going? They didn't even respond. And mm-hmm. so I need y'all to understand what, they, what these folks want to do. They absolutely, Greg, want to submit, want, want cement white nationalism for the next two generations. That's mm-hmm. the game plan. Well, it absolutely yeah. is. And, and of course, it's not going to work because the country will just fracture. So, yeah, Reese, I, 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 you know, I'm not looking forward to it. I would prefer because our people will be the ones hit. But if they, are, if they do steal this election, it won't mean the end of the people who live in the country. It's just going to mean the country's going to fracture because California is mm-hmm. not going to keep carrying the Dakotas. You see, Georgia mm-hmm. and Texas are changing demographically, and uh, New York is not going to keep carrying Iowa. And Montana. I mean, so so what will happen is this thing is going to come apart. So if you want this country to continue in its current configuration, you better go out there and vote. Now, I have friends and, and, and colleagues. We debate. We argue. And I agree with their general assessment in terms of how nations come and go. But they are uh, they're They're more willing to see that happen. So some of them will sit that out. Right. And so, you know, I, I understand their philosophy, but I also say it's our people who are going to get hurt. And it's, uh-huh. it's important to understand, you know, uh, I've, spent, I've been spending a lot of time over the last month and a half since C.T. Vivian and John Lewis left with the wee hours of the morning, flipping through books and rereading and then listening to some of these elders who I know who are still here, like Dory Ladner and them from Student Nine Coordinating Committee. These were teenagers and 20-somethings, man. When you mentioned v- v- Viola Lu- yeah. Luizzo, she's, she's a younger, I mean, you know what I'm saying? These are these are young people. They're, they're 17, 18, 19 years. John Lewis, 19 years old when Kelly Miller Smith told him, go over there and hang out with, J- with James Lawson. Who's right. still alive? So understand when right. young people say, "Well, you know, y'all old people." Hold on, slow down, because guess what? I ain't saying they was listening to the 1961 version of uh, uh, of WAP, you know, Megan and them. But it ain't like <laughs> it ain't like that. No, I'm saying, but 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 they weren't listening to all bubblegum when they were in there risking their entire lives in Lowndes County, Alabama, and in Mississippi Delta. They were having mm-hmm. fun. They were sleeping with each other. They was, hey, had all kind of intrigue. Read Stoney Carmichael right. Ready for Revolution. Read James Farmer to Making the Black Revolutionaries. Look up who Ruby Doris Robinson, Smith Robinson is, Keisha Lance Bottoms, IT. They were having the same fun young people are having now. They listen to the music. They doing what they doing. They grinding. They doing it. And then they put their entire <laughs> lives on the line, not for the red, white, and blue, but for something deeper than that, for the idea that yes. if you are a human being who draws breath on the earth, you should have a dignity that we respect. Mm-hmm. And in respecting your dignity, yeah. I respect my own. That's a big, lots of bigger principle than this crap we call the, the American Constitution or the American uh, dream. That's not what they were talking about. Now, they wrapped it in that because they understood that that was the bridge some people have to walk across to believe that they have something to hold on to. That's why I said when you talk about faith being the evidence of things not seen, that don't mean the thing don't exist. It means you can't see it yet. And that's what these white nationalists have relied on. For us, they keep waving the flag and the Constitution, and they say, now, we don't believe it, but we think you do. So therefore, if you just hold on a little longer, well, guess what? You've overplayed your hand now. So I guess mm-hmm. what I'm saying is, in conclusion, the idea that we are at war, like what Erica said, Erica's right. We are at war, and this war isn't just about an election, but without the election, mm-hmm. The other thing comes quicker. And what is the other thing? The other thing even about the fracturing of the United States. The other thing is is about this ball we live on is getting ready to reset and get rid of all the humans on it. That's the envir- that's the rollback of environmental regulation. Yep. When you see this, when you see this cotton candy melting, brain-addled, riddled clown stumble his increasingly uh, obtuse ass over into Europe and say United States is withdrawing from the Paris climate. Uh, accords. Mm-hmm. Those accords weren't even the thing. They were a gesture toward the thing. But guess what? If you if you get another four years of them, you ain't got to worry about what your politics are. And you talk about okay. we can't breathe. Guess what? 
can't nobody breathe. Because these devils right mm -hmm. here getting ready to blow it up. And the earth is going to be yes. like, we're tired of the species now. Y'all should have yep. contained that 500 years ago. But your cousins that <laughs> yeah. came out of Western Eurasia and messed this thing up, now everybody got to pay the bill. So when you see this little punk mayor, like this little town, oh, Roland, I can't think of the guy's name. In uh, Virginia, in Virginia yeah. Kamala Harris, Aunt Jemima today. I mean, you all are so damn racist that you can't mm -hmm. see what these young people in Mississippi and Alabama in the 1960s, people like John Lewis and Dory Ladner and Joyce Ladner and their little bit older mentors like Mega Wiley Evers, you can't see what they see. We gonna save ourselves if we can, and if it means saving you too, then we gonna save you too. But please don't mistake that from we value your life more than ours. Please don't mistake it for that. So you young <coughs> people talking about y'all ain't gonna vote? Just go on and go on vote.org, see if you registered. If you're not registered, and go on and pull the lever for Biden and Harris. And that's coming from somebody who doesn't believe that's the ultimate goal, but that's a weapon. And Erica then told right. y'all we are at war. So pull that yeah. lever, and once they get in there, you tell them, now I want Medicare for all. I don't care whether you believe it or not. I'm going to get everybody out here, and, and if you don't like it, I'm going to primary you like my man Jamal Bowman did and got rid of Elliot Engel. I'm going to primary you like Corey Bush did in St. Louis and got rid of Clay. I mean, look, I don't, mm -hmm. we ain't got to agree, but get them in the office first, please. Mm -hmm. That's the, right. if, mm -hmm. in fact, I should say this, Roland. I know I went on for a while, but yesterday, last night you talked about Shirley Chisholm. I was watching because I spent a lot of time rereading the stuff in the lead up to the meeting in 1972 in uh, Gary, Indiana. Shirley Chisholm didn't go to the Gary convention. She, Percy Sutton in New York supported her for running for president. But guys like the Stokes brothers and them didn't support her. And she called them out for being sexist and all that. But in the prelim meeting to the Gary convention, Shirley Chisholm said something very interesting. She said, you know, I don't think we can have a, con a convention where we can all unify because black people have too many different ideological uh, differences. I don't think we can come together. And, you know, whether she was right or wrong, that's something that we're going to have to address. Because on some things, mm -hmm. like this next 80 some days, we're going to have to be like Marcus Garvey, whose birthday is Monday. We're going to have to be uh, one God, one aim, one destiny. That we can fight all the way to the pole, vote, fight all the way back, <laughs> and then keep fighting. But damn it, <laughs> if you don't do this right here, it ain't going to be no right. pole to vote for because the flood coming and the sun going to bake your ass. And the next thing you know, we can have this argument in the ancestral realm because it ain't going to be no place <laughs> on earth for us to live. Let me, uh, okay. let me close. Let me close. Let me close this out this way. Uh, I, I saw this comment uh, on YouTube by Mike Locke, and he said, well, uh, Biden ha Harris aren't the ones to believe in. L let me just let I said on Instagram. I said now, y'all, it's, it's two choices. Y'all are more than happy to bring up the Green Party and the Libertarian Party. And anybody else, they ain't got no shot. It's two choices. Mm. Trump, mm -hmm. Pence, Biden, Harris. Right. Your thinking should be, of those two choices, which one am I more likely to be able to talk with and push to get what I want? Trump, Pence, or Biden, Harris? That's right. This is not saying, oh, I'm in love with Trump, Pence, and Biden, Harris. Exactly. This is not about I'm good with Trump, Pence, and Biden, Harris. What this, what this is about is, who am I likely, who am I likely to see in voter suppression? Trump, Pence, or Biden, Harris? Who am I likely to see support police cassette decrees? Trump, Pence, or That's Biden, right. Harris. Who That's am right. I more likely to see with a housing plan to increase black home ownership? Trump, That's Pence, right. Biden, Harris. Mm -hmm. Who am I more likely to see put in their budget funds to deal with black women and the troubling issue of having children? Trump, Pence. That's right. That's right. The so-called pro-lifers and... Biden has. Who mm -hmm. am I more likely to see reinstate the Obama era law that countered, that protected black people from auto discrimination? The team that actually reversed it, Trump, Pence, 
or Biden Harris that actually had it passed when he was vice president? Who is more likely going to advance civil rights? Trump Pence, who's rolling it back, or Biden Harris? See, these are, these are real basic. These are real basic and fundamental. And so what you have to say is, okay, I gotta make a decision here. And what mm -hmm. I gotta say is, these are the issues that I care about. Okay, and okay, who am I gonna go with? And as Greg said, when I do it, I am then going to put pressure on you to ensure that you do it. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now, who's ignoring you? <laughs> Trump, Pence, or Biden, Harris? Who has actually talked with black media, which means talking to black people? Trump, Pence, or Biden, Harris? That really, folks, is how you make decisions. I don't have to like anybody. I don't have to love anybody. But what you do have to do is like and love yourself. Mm. <laughs> yes, sir. And your children yes. and your nieces and nephews and your aunts and uncles and your mamas and daddies and your neighbors and your frat brothers, your sorority sisters and your church members and your boule brothers and yes. your Prince Hall Mason brothers and your mm -hmm. Eastern Star sisters. I, I can go down the mm -hmm. whole line. Mm -hmm. You got to make a decision. Do I love me and my people enough to actually use the one thing that they've been trying to take from me? And yeah. if they have worked that hard to take your vote, if mm. they y'all realize Desmond and Sheena Mead spent 10 years trying to get Amendment 4 on the ballot and approved in Florida. Y'all, 10 yeah. years. And when they did, Florida <clears throat> Republicans changed yeah. the law to make it <clears throat> harder to get ballot initiatives. They were fine <clears throat> with Republican ballot initiatives, but they made it harder after those black folks with the Florida Rights Rest Restoration Coalition aligned with white mm -hmm. people in Florida and Latino people in Florida and Asian mm. people in Florida and that sucker passed more than 65%. The Republicans like, no, hell no. We gonna, we gonna make this even more difficult. Y'all, it took them 10 years. Mm -hmm. And they are still fighting it. Mm -hmm. So you gotta, so you gotta vote. You got to say, who's with that amendment? Trump, That's Pence, right. Biden, mm -hmm. Harris. That's right. That's what you got to decide. And then what you got to do in this COVID world, I need every single one of y'all to do this here. I need mm. every single, y'all, it's 6,785 of y'all watching right now on YouTube. It's 1,400 watching on Facebook. It's 128 watching on Periscope. I need every single one of you. So that right there, y'all, is uh, 81, that's 8,200. If every single person watches, and if every single person says, watching, I am going to reach out to 10 people, mm -hmm. minimum, that means mm -hmm. just the people. I, oh, I need y'all. Y'all, I, I need y'all to listen to what I'm about to say. See, I love it when God just drops it. <laughs> there are 8,200 people watching this show live. If every person watching this show reaches out to 10 people who are not registered to vote, just the people watching this show will reach more people than was the winning vote margin for Donald Trump in 2016. Mm. Mm -hmm. 8,200 people times 10 is 82,000. Donald wow. Trump won by 78,000 votes. So just everybody watching, you could, if you reach, if everybody does 10, you could actually get more people registered 
than the actual vote, the margin of victory for Trump in 2016. All mm -hmm. I'm asking you to do is reach 10. That's all. Every one of y'all know at least 10 people. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Mm. You can't, and let me be clear, you cannot be in a war if there are no troops to fight the battle. That's right. You can't keep asking for generals to come up yeah. with the game plan, <laughs> the battle plan, to then rally mm -hmm. the troops if ain't no troops. Mm. That's why we all got to be in this thing. It's the yes, same sir. reason why, look, y'all got to tell, I need all y'all tell them, watch this show. Tell them folks, right. stop watching mess. Turn them damn reality shows off you see on OWN and VH1 and TV1 <laughs> and all them damn networks. All they are doing are feeding us nonsense every single day. I don't care. Yes. I don't watch, not, I don't allow that bullshit in my house because on, if it ain't feeding this, it's two things. It's two things, y'all. Fertile minds will grow, or if you infect fertile minds with weeds, it would destroy the soil. Yes. Mm. That's why mm. we do what we do. Folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. In six. company, Maris P.O. owns it. She created a couple of these great products here, folks. One of them is this VR headset right here. You can just take your uh, uh, smartphone, drop it right into here, close this up, put this thing uh, on your head, and you can actually go to their site or watch 360 degree video right here, virtual reality video with this headset. Of course, uh, they have content on seek.com. You can actually subscribe to that. So that's a pretty cool uh, headset right there. Then also they have these 360 degree 4D headphones. And so uh, you can, of course, amazing bass. You can also, uh, if you're a gamer, you can uh, utilize uh, the microphone uh, for these headphones as well. Bluetooth. So you can, I've had conversations with folks when I'm out walking with these headphones on. And so if you want to uh, get either one of these or get both of them, go to seek.com, C E E K.com. Use the promo code RMVIP2020, RMVIP2020. And so that is seek.com. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.